All right, we're on. So we're going to wait for our guest. I have a surprise for you all this evening. In the meantime, folks may be trying to figure out who our guest is. Um, I had this scheduled for 10 p.m. on YouTube. So I'm just going to go to the YouTube channel to see if it's showing up. And we'll go from there. Okay, it looks like the channel is loading. It says that I'm live. It's so dark, y'all can't see me. I wish I could say this was my new complexion that I'm working on my tan, but um, we're going to see if our guest should be in shortly. Let me see if I can grab a little light or something. Y'all bear with me. Let's see, let's see what do I have. I'm just brighten it up. I think if I brighten it up, that would be better, right? I hope so. Greetings, family. Always good to see you all. I am back. I'm here. We're waiting for our guests. Okay, it says, let's see. Ah, oh, yes. Or how do I get you in now? Brother Bomani. All right, our greetings family. How are you? I'm doing well, my sister. Appreciate you for the invite. Uh, good talking with you hey. yesterday also. You are so welcome. You know, I had to put that I have a surprise guest because no one is expecting this, right? <laughs> and I put you down as the Don Dada of African Tours and Travel. Absolutely. Africa Tours and Investment, uh, more specific. Okay. Now, the specific name, repeat that for us. Uh, yes, family. Our company is called Africa for the Africans uh, Tours and Investment. And we are specialized in this taking people across the African continent. I've taken people across, I want to say, uh, nine countries in Africa, and I've traveled to 10, and that's uh, spanning from 2004 to now. And I can go into many details, uh, but our business, Africa for Africans, we started in 2006, and I mainly mm -hmm. focused on Ghana at that point. And uh, since then, we have built on connections to Senegal and Gambia and Tanzania. And previous, in previous years, we have also done uh, South Africa, Togo, Benin, and uh, you know, countries like that. But uh, we're just right. a more stable uh, schedule now where we're just making certain adjustments. Uh, so, it, you know, it's been a nice journey. And now, you know, you're trying to focus more on being settled and investing. Uh, so all these right. beautiful countries that you have traveled to, you have to start selecting some of them and see which ones you can really work with as far as repatriation and investments. Right. Now, how many people have you said you have led to the continent? Uh, yes, uh, from uh, 2006 to 2021, those 15 years, over 500, and most of them have uh, been connected to Ghana. Wow. And would you say there have been an equal amount of men and women, or is there usually more than one? Uh, it's usually about, um, about even 50% um, more or less. Um, and if I had to give a slight edge, I would say it's just a few more women. So I would say probably maybe... You know, maybe you know 51 49 percent but uh, it's about it's about even uh some journeys you okay you have more men than more women and it just uh varies but we're always trying to get the african family to ch to journey with us exactly no that's great to hear because i think there's this uh, notion that there are more women coming to africa than there are men and i was like if anybody could confirm or verify that information it would be you <laughs> so I'll definitely give the edge to the women. Women are more adventurous for certain things. I've been doing all kind of marketing uh, to get more guys uh, traveling with us, including taking pictures with a lot of beautiful women and things that I'm always telling people. These are not my wives and not my girlfriends. Some of them are associates and friends, even you know, family members. But trying to show that you know, with guys, you have to market things a little bit different. W women are looking for things organized, structured, and professional. And um, men right. may be looking for certain things. Not saying that men are not looking for that, but it's just, you know, it's, it's that mindset, but I'm always trying to just market different ways in general 
uh, trying to get more people to even bring their children and their family. But even though that's not always easy, having you know your old family because the, you know, the cost adds up. Right, but your tours are very reasonable. Uh, yes, I would like to think so because um, everything is done here at Bomani Technology, which is our first business. We mainly do computer service and business consultation and business services uh, here. And um, I've learned to, to use the skills to kind of start other business, you know, because if you have a, a great technology and a business background, you can basically get into any business if you put the work into it. So that's how I was able to get into uh, the Africa for Africans Tours and Investment and also um, the Black Star Pan-African Community. Now, when, when you made your very first trip, what was going through your mind that you had to bring people or like what spurred that? to make you say like, we need to start doing these tours. Did you go alone with your own family? How did that come about? Well, perfect. I gave this uh, start uh, from 2004. In 2004, mm -hmm. I paid for a journey to go to uh, Egypt, which was the second journey, but I had some coworkers uh, invited me to go to Senegal. And this was, uh, this was, I want to, looking back, and this was March of 2004 and so I had a brother from Sierra Leone invited me, and then it was two sisters from America and one from Ethiopia. And all five of us uh, went to Senegal, and that was my first experience. And then once I got connected to um, to Gori Island to learn about the African Holocaust, because I, was, I started studying around 2003, because before that, I'm being honest, I didn't know anything about my African roots or culture. And that's just realistic. It's a lot of us out here in our 20s and even older that didn't know those things, but uh, I was able to just study and take the pride based on friends and associates and coworkers, this, you know, empowering you to learn more about, you know, who we are as a people. And then you see people with these conscious books and DVDs. And I really got into it and really just took it, you know, took it to where, you know, I started making those journeys. So when I went to Egypt, that was the second journey. I went with uh, the famous uh, world scholar, Dr. Renoka Rashidi. And uh, you know, then that time, me and my uh, crews and rest in, rest in peace and power, you know, great answer, you know, great um, African warrior. Uh, now an ancestor. Um, and I learned a lot from him uh, because for the first time I was able to see someone do an organized tour. I mean, it was, you know, the Egypt tours are serious because you have to bring your book, you know. And as a matter of fact, let me make sure I grab my book that I brought. You know, when you mentioned his name, that just ch touched my heart. I actually had the um, opportunity. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I had the opportunity of see, seeing him speak virtually, but it was on a live and we were able to ask questions. And that was with um, Living My Best Life in Ghana with Power and Future. They had him on as a guest several times. And that was the first time I was even introduced to him. So I had been following him after that and just amazed by him saying, you know, the roles that we played in history that people don't want to talk about. And for me, it, what really stood out was um, in martial arts, you know, when I see our people doing Kung Fu and all these different things, especially being on a continent, it never occurred to me that these arts were, you know, part of African history, that we were some of the original martial artists and that we're shown historically in China, because people just don't really talk about that kind of stuff. So, you know, like you said, sleep in peace, much respect to the doctor, and um, may his legacy continue for sure. Uh, yes, his work was phenomenal because, you know, he, he spent most of his time this out and showing us the great African presence in every single parts of the world. You know, yeah, like, yeah. In some countries I would see pop up, I was like, Renoko is just a man because I'm not going there, but appreciate him for doing the work. And then, you know, yeah. like people like myself is like, you get to the point where I'm more focused on taking us to Africa, but then there's also African presence around the entire world. And that's what I love about Dr. Renoko Rashidi. He literally was just all about this, making these journeys and taking people around. But so in 2004, once I went with him, I, you know, I made a nice documentary um, and I have it up on, I just actually uploaded it to YouTube this year. I did it in 2004 and I just uploaded it because back then, you know, there was no, we didn't have like YouTube like it is now and things like that. Yes. And these were on VHS. Uh, people ask me, what is a VHS? And for those who know it, uh, you know, it's that old school system videotape. And then we converted everything to DVD. And then since I converted to DVD, I realized that I could just upload it to YouTube. And I wanted to show yeah. people, after all the 3,000 videos I've uploaded to YouTube, I wanted to show people the foundation 
Um, you know, even though Senegal was the first trip I took, the Egypt journey was the foundation of, you know, how I got to where I'm at because I was around a scholar and I was around other brothers and sisters in an organized tour. And that's why I love the fact, you know, these organized tours help connect a lot of us together. I have people who have traveled with me and even if someone don't, you know, they may not communicate with me but, uh, you know, like that because it's a lot of people to communicate with. But what they've done is they communicate with a lot of each other and connect with each other and build certain things. And that's what yeah. I love about uh, this kind of business. You know? and, that, and, then, and the same thing with uh, Dr. Renoko Rashidi. Some of the people that we met, we're still friends. I have, you know, I have two good brothers in England. Um, I just, you know, my great brothers and we know we, we disconnected from 2004 and we're still friends up until 2022. Wow. And then when I go That's back true. to England again next time, I mean, I'm going to definitely go see them and their family like I've always done over the years. So That's these things true. are a combination of just us kind of coming together and also us making an example that we can come together and show that, you know, we can make a move and learn something and and, and put it pretty much uh, share the path of what we can do together as a people. Uh, and then yes. beyond that, I, I started taking it to another level and say, you know what, let's do um, roots and culture and investment tours and, and then use a more popular country. And then that's where I came up with Ghana based on studying the connection of Kwame Nkrumah and the work that he, the work and his studies in the U.S. And then him being connected to Ghana and then being the first president and then reaching out to us and say, come on home. Ghana is your home. We want to see more diasporans and things like that. And that inspired me. And so. We just made it. We made the move, and then just started building little by little, and it's just incredible how we're here to this day, where we're talking about building our community in in Africa, and then working with our people there in different countries, and just building a future for our children. Because I'm telling people that people like myself have had an incredible life, even though I'm 44. You know, but you also now you get to the point where you like let's think about the future of our race, the future of our children. Let's put this work together, come together and put opportunities in place for them. That's what I love about this incredible repatriation movement going on in Gambia and Ghana, because these are honestly the two most popular countries. If you ask me to add another country, I would say Tanzania. And before the craziness started going on in South Africa, I would add that as another country. Uh, right. Uh, and, then, yeah. and, and then you're enjoying the beautiful life in the Gambia. And it's it's like, we talk about people I moving to the I Gambia. Can. When you hear about Gambia, you talk about repatriation. You're not just talking yeah. about just coming to Africa and just hanging out and going back to America. No, not at all. You know, and I had to, we should, we should tell the family how this all got started. I see there's 11 people watching. So please family hit the like button, share with everybody, let them on, let them know that we're on with our surprise guest, the Don Dada of African travel. I had to put, make sure I did this announcement. So, let me just say, um, R. Hogan, I want to give blessings. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, Miss Roro, thank you for joining in. And it's fine. Oh, absolutely, family. I'm so glad you all are able to pop in at the last minute like this. So Bomani called me. I was on my way to uh, Jamaican V's birthday party, who is a DJ here in the Gambia. But she also used to give tours from the UK from to Africa. So she had her birthday party last night and Bomani called me because he's such a professional businessman. He's calling me and he's like, sister, are you still going to Africa? We have a trip coming up, blah, blah. And I thought to myself, wow, this brother is on it because I've been living in Gambia now over six months. But I contacted Bomani when I was leaving with my son, right? Because I said to him, listen, I want to go on one of your tours if I'm traveling to Africa and I wanted to travel with his tour. The problem was the time, right? The time that we were going was when they were canceling a lot of flights because of COVID and stuff. So I didn't even get to book with you. I'm sorry. I said that word, didn't I? The pandemic. That whole pandemic thing was happening. And I wanted to leave at a certain time, but your tour was taking place at a later date. And I was gonna try to connect with you all in Ghana, but it didn't work out to connect because the way I wanted to leave, I was going from Ghana to Sierra Leone to Gambia. But the brother was so kind, even though I wasn't traveling with his group, he called me back and gave me a list of um, airlines that I could use. He told me he would connect. He probably doesn't even remember this, but he told me he could connect me with some people. 
And I was just like, you know, didn't ask for anything, right? There were no fees involved. He was just giving the information freely. That's and I good. remember that. I remember that. So when you called me last night, I was like, oh, no, this is like destiny right here. It's not just you calling me and I'm already living here, but I am meant to interview you and bring you on to the family. And for people who don't know about you, they're going to find out, right? They're going to find out today. So I had to make sure I got uh, got you on here and let folks know what you're offering for our family that is still trying to visit the continent and really doesn't have a clue or doesn't want to be bothered with the nitty gritty of it all. You are the man they should be dealing with because you will make that process very smooth. Absolutely. We do a complete 100% preparation from helping yes. people with uh, passports, visas, uh, even, even up to residency. I, I, I'm going to get to the point where, you know, once I get into the, the citizenship game, we'll be able to help people with citizenship. But those are the three things that we can literally help people with. You know? And also just help them get prepared and organized. And whatever protocol situation it is, going to whatever country, usually what I do is literally just read through all the process and then go through it with our group. So we do a lot of conference calls and a lot of videos and, a lot of discussion uh, to share with people because, and then also whatever country we're traveling to, usually we have playlists from the previous journeys that yes. we have to where you can just go to YouTube on my YouTube channel, and then uh, which is Bomani 2007 or Bomani Time. Yes. And once you click on playlists, you see a whole lot of playlists for all of the different uh, groups. I've learned to just create playlists, especially when you have like 3,000 videos. Bomani, like let me interrupt for one second, sure. please. Um, Afro Gambian girl, you are welcome to the channel, but I need to say this to you and I don't want you to be offended. I do not address low vibration people on my oh, channel. Yeah, absolutely. Okay? <laughs> so I'm going to um, just take, the, we're going to need to delete this comment. Um, so that information, we don't need that here. I appreciate if you. you want to know, let me just. If you want to know about anybody, I'm going to tell you to follow that person's channel and address them with any questions that you may have. Do not listen to what other people have to say. I don't know anything about what's being said because I don't rock with low vibration people. I try to stay around people that make me more productive and are productive to my journey. And I'm going to recommend that you do the same. Okay. So please, any other questions you have, you know, you are welcome, but do not mention anybody that's low vibration here. If you follow my channel, you know, I don't move like that. And please, anybody in the chat, if you all have channels or you want to come on a live, hit me up privately, Instagram, ALM the artist, send me a message, say, I want to come on and talk about my journey. I want to come on. I have questions. The brother is here because of the amazing tours that he does. There's proof in the pudding. Go to his channel, check out the tours. You see all these beautiful melanated people on his tours, vibing. I just get a kick out of watching folks on the buses and the tours, vibing, and just, you know, really enjoying themselves. Sometimes it becomes emotional for people. It's really beautiful. I know at one point, I think one of the last thing I watched for money was you had like a real estate thing going on. Um, I think it was like property and people were trying to buy and you were doing like development. Like it was into like you were like you said, it was investment, but it was deep. And I wasn't there yet because I didn't know what country I actually wanted to settle in yet. So I was kind of just there to learn and to see what some of the challenges were. I remember you talking about some things like that. Uh, absolutely, I can definitely share it. Uh, I can definitely share it. And also, just want to let anyone know, if you, I'm a person that's open to communication. Um, I spend my time here working all day, and uh, I look forward to talking to anyone. So anyone want to talk to me, they can always send me a message and talk. But what we always want to do is uh, we want to stay focused on nation building. Uh, so, uh, and if you know if somebody's really concerned about anything, you know, we can dialogue and talk. I make myself available for us to talk. But uh, what I wanted to share with people ultimately is you, what you saw was... I'm just so proud of it. It's, it's, it's in, in, uh, like literally sometimes I just get emotional because it's like, you, you know, you, you're talking about the things that we need to work on. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm remembering studying Malcolm X and Malcolm X always talk about, about land being the base of independence. And we always talk about that's the issue that we have in America. We can't really 
acquire land and build what we really want to build on it for black power nation building. So I was able to figure out that we can do that in Ghana. And I was able to build relationships with uh, the chiefs that we're working with um, in a community called Jahadzi. It's outside of uh, Winneba and it's about an hour and a half away from Accra and been able to organize business attorneys to do all the legal corporate uh, paperwork. Because one thing about getting uh, land and things like that, and that was the most, that's the scary thing. It's a lot of responsibility, but what you have to do is you have to have your legal team together and you have to have your full organized team together, including surveyors, consultant, and people that you trust with your life uh, to, to work the deal. So the beautiful thing about it was we were able to acquire 15 acres that we paid in full, and then we're making payments on 60 acres. And we have all of the legal paperwork on that, including business and corporation. So what I've done is uh, on our website, Africa for the Africans.org, I've literally put those things up and the, 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 the way I show respect to my brothers and sisters is putting everything out there and they can take a look at it and process it. And if they call me, I can also send them relative emails and then give them a chance to process it so they can be clear and move forward. Uh, that way they understand that if you're going to do any kind of deal as far as land, whether it's with me or anyone else, make sure you don't give those people no money. And just like, you know, when I was talking with you, I wasn't asking for any money and everything because we have to have dialogue and we have to be 100 percent clear about everything that we're doing before money takes place. And that's the issue that I have with the society that we want. People literally just be on some money thing with you. And I'm like, yo, I don't even know you. You know, let's get to know each other and we can definitely do business and things. Uh, so exactly. once I have documents up there, I tell individuals, please, family, if you need to t share it with your mother, your spouse, your brother, your sister, your husband or whoever or attorney, or you need to go to the country and have your local people go to the land uh, registration or go to, um, you know, sorry, excuse me, the Lands Commission or take it to the courts of Ghana and things like that. Do your do your legal work, do your footwork, do your, you know, do what you, your due diligence. That way, when you approach me now, we can do business together, organize, and we can move forward, you know, because right. then we don't have to deal with a lot of, you know, uh, foolishness and things like that. So these are the things that you're trying to educate people about. So it's more than just even doing a business. You're educating people about the process of organizing yourself. And I'm always telling people that when we go to Africa, is you know, we find ourselves sometimes as individuals, but definitely while we're being individuals moving there, definitely do a lot of networking. And I also tell people, do not run away from the African diaspora that's in every country. There are some of your greatest assets and resources. Some of them you do want to run away from because... Of the drama. It's true, but you know who to stay away from quickly. And I've learned that. You learn who to stay away from quickly, and you learn who is worthy of your time quickly. Like I said, if they're not productive to your journey, if the energy is not reciprocated, you just move on. It's not personal. You know what I'm saying? Um, we have a few questions. I just want to kind of address these really quick. Um, let me see. Please, greetings to everyone. Thank you all so much for joining in. I appreciate you all. I'm so glad you were able to come in and meet with uh, Brother Bumani and I. And please, I have 17 people. Hit that like button. Be sure to share and subscribe to both of the channels if you're not already subscribed. Someone is asking a question about, let me see. Um... Bob Garvey, I see you. I see you, B. Slayton. I see you, R. Hogan. I just want to make sure I say hi to everyone. Dark and lovely. Um, I think Bob Garvey is kind of answering your question, but I'm just going to give you generally. I, um, I've i learned that paying $400 a month, which is dollars, is too much for an unfurnished apartment, if that's helpful. You could get a compound for that price and it could possibly be furnished. It really depends on where you're willing to live, who you're gonna live around, like security, having people that speak the same language, like all of those things may be an issue for you. Having dogs, having a guard, like, you know, you really have to decide what's important to you. So it's really kind of difficult to give you numbers. I'm actually going to schedule a live probably in another week where I talk about cost of living and I hope that's more helpful. Um, if anyone wants to pop in, please feel free. Um, Bomani, in case they want to ask you questions, are you open for that as long as it's um, respectful and related? Do you have time for that tonight? Oh, absolutely. I've, I've, I have time. I've made my time available because I'm always want to connect with our people and share my side of the story and, and then talk with people directly, which I feel like is very important now. 
that we need to okay, do. We talk to more so more please, I'll be straight in. Thank you. Subscribe and share both channels. I appreciate you. XDMC, my brother, you in the house. Um, please, if you want to hop in, let me know. And you know, we'll tap you into the live stream. This wasn't planned, but when I spoke to the brother yesterday evening, I was like, I'm gonna try. This is my first time doing a live on StreamYard and adding someone all together. Like I've never done it before, but I figured if I was gonna try it, it would be with the worthy guest I'm testing my tech skills right now, but I had to try it tonight. So um, Dark and Lovey, I hope that was helpful. XDMC blessings. And let me know, like, I'm not sure how do I find, I guess we'll just put it in the chat if you want to hop into the live and it's related to the topic. Um, my contact information on Instagram is ALM, the artist. Now, if so, do I need to send the link? Do I just put the link in the chat for people who uh, might want to join in? Is that how it works for streaming? Oh yes, let's put the link in the chat, and then if you want to highlight any of the, the you know the uh, text or post, you just click on it, and it will pop up on the screen. Yeah, I highlighted R Hogan, um, first one in, and gave us a beautiful greeting. I actually highlighted that one, and let's see, Jackie C. I've been looking for you. I keep asking people, where is Jackie C? I need to know she's okay. So I'm so thankful that you are here and you are as well and healthy. Now let me see how I can add this in, y'all. Okay, it's supposed to comment. I'm learning, y'all. I'm telling y'all really testing my skills. You know, I don't enjoy the editing and the tech stuff, but I'm trying. Oh, it's okay, good. It's you know, it's, this is a good system where you just, you know, you keep practicing and keep, uh, you know, working on it and, you know, we get better as time go along. So it's yeah, You know what? I watch videos and everything. Like, I'm trying, y'all. I really am. I'm, I'm trying to get in the light here. I'd like to think I'm so dark. That's why y'all can't really see me because, you know, I've been working on my tan over time. But uh, I, I put the link in the chat for the for, um, stream yard if anyone wants to pop in. And it's related to the topic of traveling to the continent, um, staying on high vibrations, because that's what it's about. And us helping you be more productive as far as your journey. Some of us are kind of scared to come to the continent, you know, and Bomani is the one to kind of hold your hand and get you to the continent if it's what you really want to do. Now, Bomani, can you just repeat about what, uh, countries you've led brothers and sisters to over the years? Because well, some people are just coming in. I don't know that they heard you in the beginning. Oh, perfect. Uh, yes, definitely. So let me just start yeah. uh, from the, uh, the uh, beginning. Uh, with 2004, traveled to Senegal and Egypt. Um, so that's uh, two. Then the following year in 2005, additional countries I went to was Kenya and South Africa, making four. In 2006, traveled to the Gambia as the fifth country and Ghana as the country number six. Um, then it's 2006. And, and from there, uh, went to countries like uh, Togo, Benin, and that is seven and eight. And went to the other country is uh, Ethiopia. And then uh, whatever, and then Tanzania is the 10th uh, country. And looking forward to this goal, be on the 10th country and travel some more. But those are the 10 countries literally. And, that was within my first several years in Africa. And then later on, we just added a few more countries. So I spent the years from 2004 to 2006, honestly, doing what you call fact-finding mission. Even though when I took my first journey to Ghana, it was eight of us. And that was just kind of organizing your, your closest friends and people who literally trust you uh, to make a statement. And it's amazing because that was December 2006. And then I did my second journey, October of 2007. So we went from eight people to 42. That, I mean, the momentum was just like there. I mean, when I got back, I was so I was just like in a zone, and I had already just relieved myself from the plantation. So I was motivated. I was just on everybody's radio show. I was out there with DVDs and out there with flyers and postcards out there at different events, signed up for different black organizations. That was like the those days was just incredible, and I just appreciate all the support because that support from my brothers and sisters, especially I was just very young. I was in my um, mid twenties, and I had all the support as this being this young person that's studying and is so into Africa and, and things like that. And, and here we are now, now I'm in a better position to help way more people and help connect our people. And then now we're building communities and now we can actually 
offer real help to people if someone wants to just make a move we could just get them to a, get them to a country like ghana get them settled to where they have a nice apartment three bed nice house three bedroom two bathroom house and they can pay for one year lease for two thousand dollars so when you're talking about the four hundred dollars per month it's serious because if you're paying more than like four or five hundred dollars a month that is a lot of money it's not you know people are like oh i'm from america we used to pay fifteen hundred dollars a month friend i was like you, you you don't want to be spending all this money on rent. You know, you want to, because eventually you want to get your land and build your home. So you want to make sure that you have a good lease plan. So that's what, those are the things that we offer people um, to where we just find the best prices to where you can just get your lease and work on things you're doing. So you know, definitely family. Um, um, we just want to just keep working on this and doing things together because the more of us connect, then we can help more of our people in the dashboard. Cause realistically, a lot of people not don't have the heart like you and many other people I see. You organize your family and you guys go to the Gambia or go to Ghana, other countries, and you just get set up there. And it's just a beautiful inspiration. So some of the people who may not be able to have that organized plan, we figure, hey, if we build a community, if we build a foundation and build the energy there, then we can just say, hey, uh, if you and some other people we can put together, can share a house, can share resources, and we work together, we can make it fruitful to where our cost of living in Africa is less. And I tell people, our, our community that we're building, the goal is to where you pay for your, you get your house built so you don't have no mortgage. You build your own water system, whether it's catch water or different methods, and you have your own uh, power system, uh, whether it's solar or different methods. So you have no electricity and no water bill. For me, like that's a dream come through, because that's like the nightmare you deal with from the, you know, because these are literally the sources that take all of your money. And then when you then you may not necessarily need a car payment or anything, but um, individuals can bring their vehicles over or they can sell their vehicles and get something uh, local there in the country. Uh, so these are the things that you can do to where you, you're there in the continent and your, your, your money is going further, which is very important because sometimes we come there and we get excited and we just spend and spend and spend and then you realize that you're not, we you know, producing that money. So for the people who have like social security and retirement, they're set. But most of us are coming out at a younger age. So we have business and investments and we have to learn to just work that because I appreciate anyone who wants to come when they're 65 or in their 60s and retire. That's that's fine. But we do need a younger gen more and more for younger generation also to do the physical hard work and the running around because once you come at 65, you, you know, you're gonna be limited, but at the same time too. Uh, you may not be looking to be doing this heavy, hard work because, especially if you spend 40 years of your life working on a plantation, and that you know, and those things can wear you out. And then yes. after while you come to Africa, you don't have Sorry, any time. I just, I need to address something real quick. Okay. Um, African Queen, I addressed this earlier. We do not deal with low vibrations on this channel. Okay, so please, if you want to. Um, find out more about the brother. Feel free to look in his channel, do your own investigation. You can talk to the brother directly. You can send him questions. We are here to talk about unity and high vibrations. We are here to motivate each other. So we don't address, I don't even know what's going on. I don't care what's going on because I don't deal with low vibrations. It's all oh, about yeah. high vibrations here, okay? Yeah, I'm so, a very yes. proud person. I've uh, been in this movement for a long time. Um, like I was saying, about 18 years. So, uh, you know, yeah, I'm one of the people. Like, 2004, right? From 2004 yeah. to 2004. And doing a lot of incredible work. So, uh, you know, so some people may have different things that they want to talk to me about. So I tell them, just reach out to me directly. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm one of them yeah. person, like, especially when I'm talking to men, I tell men that, hey, if you got something to say to me, call me and talk to me as a man. We can, you know, you can, we can meet, we can come and we can break bread and we can connect. Because right. you know, real, you know, like I always tell men, real men talk about things and they build and work together. Because we have our African family to think about. We have our we have our women and our children to take care. And you know, so exactly. take care. but but definitely. Okay, so we're gonna move forward from that. Yeah, Absolutely. that's COVID. You know, please, I didn't bring you. You know, like I said, I didn't even know what was going on. I was just so excited because of my experience with you. I know how you move. I know your sincerity your efforts to unify the people, and it's proof in the pudding. That's it. When you have proof, you go to your records, right? Period. Absolutely. So we're yeah. going to move that forward. So, Bamani, I guess my other question is, did you always know that you would be doing these tours? You said you took a trip 
right? Were you like, did you have previous history with Africa before actually taking a trip? Or was that like, I just got to go and see for myself? Well, how did you even get to that point? I started studying when I was 25 uh, uh, in 2003, uh, when my brothers was reaching out to me and I just started reading these books and I was asking questions and next thing you know, they were hitting me with the books and next thing you know, they was, you know, just t telling me I need to just learn more about you know, myself as a person. And I was like, you know, you're right. Because at that point, I was, I was like this aviation expert. I joined the Navy at 18 years old and I was like heavy into aviation, working on airplanes and looking to, and I had, I had the dream of um, being a Naval officer, aviation officer. And even, even also I had the dream of just working my way up in the airlines, which is my next career after that. But once you connect with faith and destiny, the ancestors have that calling for you. And, you know, when they call, you got to answer. And that's exactly what I did. And that was that that was right there in the Holocaust dungeons there in Senegal and things like that. So and on top of that, study Marcus Garvey, which is one of my which is my number one greatest inspiration, uh, especially since he's a Jamaican man that stepped out of Jamaica and went to connect with the rest of the world. And I like to just consider myself this someone who's continuing a legacy of the great Marcus Garvey. And, you know, Marcus Garvey, he just he, he was that iconic figure that did so much for black people. But it's sometimes it's never always just appreciated. And sometimes it's, you, you know, you, people want to give you your flowers when you're dead. And I'm telling people, let's cherish our people while they're living and doing the work and everything. Uh, and also, you know, the other books and other scholars I've studied, it just basically confirmed that some of us need to step out and hold the line and holding the line is a lot of responsibility i tell people you're handling things where you have so much pressure on you and then you don't always have your brothers and sisters that's the supporting you and having your back and you know but but it just it just has to be done so that's what we have done family we've literally just put the energy into where we just out there and you're using your own resources you're not borrowing up you you're, you're generating money from creating business i'm telling i'm one of them people that you create business because you realize that we, you know, we're, we as a people need to invest more in business. Like I told my son, once he gets a certain age, he's studying, he's, you know, studying this technology. Um, the company is called Bomani Technology. I was like, son, that's your company. We have a few other companies also. And this is just for our family and our friends and close people because we want to inspire other people to create opportunities for the children. And that's what I want to hear more people talk about. Like, you know, like most of the people I talk to, we're in our 40s and up. But it's like, what about our children? What about the future? Where are they going to work? What's going to happen when in America, when Mexico unload the entire population off in America? You know, and you know what's going to happen to us as the, the African family who've been here stolen? What is going to be our legacy? Is the corporation going to hire our children or are they going to hire the children of all these other people that are coming in in numbers and things like that? Uh, so, you know, we have to be serious about this because if a bunch of Mexicans are building business, Indians, Chinese, Lebanese, who are they going to hire? Let's be realistic. They're going to hire their people. And who is going to get the remaining little low budget jobs? Us. So same thing I tell people when you're in Ghana, and I'd say this is a Lebanese restaurant. I'd say, you know, you notice they have one or two people here working, but look who's running the catch register. Look who's managing and things like that. And look who's getting paid $150 an hour and who's making $1,000 a month. Sorry, $150 a month versus $1,000 a month for the people running things. Uh, so... This is serious, our, 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 the future of our children in that state. And that's why I try to support all of us repatriating because that's the most important movement because where do we have all this land? Africa, we can build communities, we can build factories, we can build all kinds of industries. And the same thing I was telling my crew and our chief and the people we're working with, I was letting them know that we, we have two phases of land, but I tell them what I really want, you know, because I thought I think about Jamaica all the time. I think about Ocho Rios, Negril, and Montego Bay. I think about one of the most beautiful uh, coastline that is completely owned by others. It's not much of our own people that have those investments. So I, I realized that if we get access to land in Africa, beach access land, we can build all these things that we wanted to build. We can reach out to and find investors. So what I'm looking to do is build business organized to where we now reach out to black groups of uh, business people. And we have a lot of them here in Georgia. I've been meeting with them little by little, meeting with different people at universities and so on. And they're feeling this Africa energy, but I know what it is. They want to see more built. So when I show people that our business office there uh, in our community, Jahadzi, and I show them that one house that's built and two houses that are coming up, and I show them elements of certain things, people are getting excited about it. And, uh, you know, and as you build on more to it, 
that's when you have more people seeing it. So right now, people, are, a lot of people are feeling us, and we're gonna we're getting this done. And I want people to be you know, to appreciate what we're doing, and let people know that if I can be and you know give them any advice or help them, I want to help them in this way because we need more of us to acquire land and and organize it to where you know while we have our people here working you know working on these plantation jobs. They can pay for the land. They can get their house built and things set up. And then when they're ready to just make a move and then they go to Ghana, the, they have, their home is there, they're in a community. And then they don't have to kind of waste additional money or get to the country where they're spinning their wheels. Because, you know, it's, it, once you move to a certain country, a lot of times it takes people years to, to, to get things done. But then sometimes after one or two years, the money go funny and then you have to go back to America or go to the American embassy and say, hey, things have gone wrong for me. Can you help me get out of here? And, you know, and we don't want to see our people do that. We want our people to say, hey, Bomani, uh, things are not working out right, man. Uh, can I come holler at you at the community? I was like, come on, family. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll get certain things for you. And, you know, we have, you know, we have a guest house here. This is some of the work that we need done. And we can trade some of your labor, your skills for certain resources. And let's look out for each other, you know, because, and that's why I look at all of us that's there right now in Africa and going back and forth. We're like the pioneers of the 21st century. And that's why anyone I can talk to that's moving and living in Africa and everything, I just want to build fresh relationships with all of us because we are the future of helping our people. And then also we're the future of bridging that gap in Africa to where now our people in Africa can say, you know what, we like the diaspora energy because they're united, they're organized. And now we organize with them. We, you know, we can really make the African continent for us as a people. And I really believe that honestly. But you know what? You don't just believe that. You live that. Living the life. You know, like I, you know, I am testimony from that with my own, like I said, my single experience with you is really, it's all about the heart and unifying our people. Um, and that's what I said. We keep it high vibration here. We don't do nothing with none of this low vibration, carrying information. You want to know something, talk to the person that's the being stores. accused. You want the truth, follow the person's channel. Look at their history. Look at what they've done for the people, right? That's how we move. So all of this extra, we're not dealing with none of that. We're going to keep it positive because that's how we move. This right? is family. You have to keep high vibrations and really stay positive because uh, this thing can wear you out. So I'm always telling people, yeah, um, do research. And you know what? You are absolutely right. I just want to respond to this comment. You know, XDMC, I don't even know about people that been coming coming back, but I'm going to tell you what was real, running out of money. And you know what happens? It's not just that you run out of money. It's that your resources are being interfered with from the states. Nobody's talking about that. I'm going to tell you how hard they make it just for you to do a money transfer. Serious. How they question everything that has to do with Africa. I am here and got my card blocked, right? And I'm like, how? I have my card, but the number was stolen. Now, T-Mobile had a breach in the States, right? And so I end up seeing uh, my bank asking me, do, did I do a transaction in Germany for Skype? I don't even use Skype and I'm not in Germany. So I, of course I said no. So automatically when I say I don't do the transaction, that blocks your card. Now if they block my card, I can't pull money out the cash machine, right? And if I call my bank, what's my bank gonna say? 30 to 45 days for a new card. Look at the inconvenience. I've been waiting over 50, 60 days now for a new card. Luckily, I have a business here that I am trying to hold on. Luckily, the business is paid for, right? But the money from my business is how I'm paying my bills. I came here with the intention of doing online businesses. I can't do online businesses when people are stealing at the post office. So all these things that you take for granted that you think will be so easy to do on the continent, it can't. You have to have multiple streams of income. So if you're not prepared for that, a lot of people will be like, no, I can't deal with that. You know, I, but I know no matter what, I'm going to make a move and I'm going to be OK. Things may move a little slower. They may not be how the quickness that I'm used to or the convenience, but it's definitely 
it's definitely an intentional plan to keep Africa in a certain place, to limit its resources, to limit us while we're here. It's very intentional. I was calling, I remember just even trying to transfer money to someone. A lot of people here don't use PayPal and the things that we use. So folks are not dealing with cards. They're dealing strictly with cash, which is something we're not used to. We're used to using debit cards and credit cards and that cash is king here. That's a reality. And that's not for everybody because some of us have grown used to living another way. You know, so I just wanted to address that for sure. That's it, XDMC. They don't want to lose their money and their workers, and they try to hold our money the best they can for sure. Yep. So, Bamani, please continue. Um, I know you, you always talk about nation building and generational wealth. And, you know, again, I say it, the proof is in the pudding. You your actions speak louder than your words because you live with everything you've talked about, everything you study, you followed some of the greats, you know, and been in their presence and had them as role models, you know, and mentors. So we know you, you what you come with is the real thing, you know, um, and that's all I care about. And that's why when you called me last night, it was like, listen, are you still making this trip to Africa? I was like, this brother is on it. He don't even know I'm here now, but he's making sure I get to the continent. So I was like, I have to bring you on and let the family know, um, you know, how you move. They need to know about what you're doing, how you're getting people here. And can you just let's just run. I, I like to kind of go back over the beginning again for people that might have just come in. Could you please state again the name of your company, all of your social media handles? <laughs> and how long you've been doing this work. That's perfect. Uh, yes, um, so our website details is africaforthafricans.org and it represents um, the foundation of our work from 2006 to 2021. Uh, those are important uh, 15 years and you'll see the updates for 2022. But, but what we have um, organized uh, is um, Africa Tourism Investment. Uh, so take people to right now four different countries. That's uh, Senegal, the Gambia, Ghana, and Tanzania. And I've also taken people to five other African countries. And then the, the one, um, Egypt, I've never taken any groups to it. It was just my foundation group. Uh, and um, as far as the social world, um, I have 3,000 videos on YouTube and it's um, youtube.com forward slash Bomani2007, or you can type in Bomani Tayemba. And you'll see my you know, name in the search and lots of videos. And once you click on it, you just click on the name and that will load you up to the channel. Once you're on the channel, you'll see a, a whole lot of playlists uh, because there's so many videos. So, And the, the ones you're going to see right away is all the last tours that I did last year. Senegal and Gambia in April, Ghana in May, Tanzania in November, and then Ghana again in December. So those are the active playlists. But then you have so much more beyond that one and things like that. Uh, as, Facebook, I'm a person that uh, used Facebook. Um, when it came out, I just started uploading a lot of the pictures and things. So if you go all the way back to 2006, we have every single photo gallery that we have taken. Every trip that we have, we have done one or multiple photo galleries. And that shows basically photos from uh, us from leaving the US or at the airport uh, to whatever African country you just, you just showing people this photos that shows you a whole timeline of being in the country. So that documentation is by video, photos, um, and the other documentation uh, is the website. So that covers all things, photos, pictures, and you know details. Uh, Instagram, it's uh, Bomani2015. And, and those are my you know, main social uh, connections. Uh, email is, uh, you can get it from the website, but email is AFTA2010 at msn.com. So individuals can just email and I'll just reply back to them. And then they can also yeah. get access to my phone number from the website and connect me uh, and link with me on WhatsApp or just send me a message on WhatsApp. And that's something that I can just answer uh, throughout the day. Uh, so anybody that's looking to connect with me, um, you know, my information is just out there. Just type in search and you see a whole bunch of Bomani comes up with videos and interviews yeah. with so many different oh, people. High vibration, high vibration information. Right, right. So please, family, if you weren't here when I started, I don't know what's going on. Mind you, as you all know, I'm a YouTuber, but my YouTube information, 
I like to think it's high vibration. Any low vibration stuff that's happening, I couldn't even tell you about it. That's not why Bomani is here. So if you have questions for him, like he said, you have all of his information. Feel free to contact him and ask your questions directly if you feel that whatever is being said uh, directly affects you. Outside of that, we're not addressing no low vibration here stuff here. I don't want it mentioned here. It will not be addressed here. So contact Momani, talk to the brother. Like I said, get your own opinion. Stop listening to what people have to say. Because generally the people that's running their mouth are not productive, not moving toward unity and irrelevant, quite honestly. So we're just going to get back on topic. Mm -hmm. We were talking about Bomani's efforts um, as far as unifying our people, how long he's been doing this work how many of us he's still continuing to bring to the continent, his social media handles, my sister, Global Green Book. Thank you so much. I appreciate you for putting um, his links there. Like he said, his website information is available, his phone number. Get in touch with him. Look at his videos. Make you come to your own conclusions. You are intelligent enough to know about how the grapevine work, right? You pass information past information stuff get distorted so i'm gonna say this uh i brought bomani on because he calls me yesterday evening i was on my way into an event and I, I didn't recognize the number and i was like who's calling me from this number i answered the phone and bomani's like sister you know we have a tour coming up i just wanted to see if you were still in and i'm like wow this brother is on it like i've been on the continent all this time but he is making sure i'm okay and that's what it's about, us looking after each other, making sure that we are able to make this journey if we truly intend to make this journey. Because a lot of us talk about going to the continent, but we know we ain't never going to the continent. So we'd rather sit back and run our mouths and not put our feet on the ground and see for ourselves what it's really about. So I'm not saying everybody has to come live here, but I do believe that everyone should at least travel to the continent once in their lives. If they do anything else, they need to do that. So, Bamani, I guess um, my next question to you is, you do a lot of work in Ghana. How do you feel about how this whole pandemic has interfered with people's plans in Ghana? I know it personally that it deterred a lot of folks from going there and being concerned about land that they had brought in and stuff. Can you speak on that? Uh, yes, um, it's, um, it's unfortunate, but um, Ghana do have uh, one of the strictest uh, entry policy. And um, last year when I went in December, you know, uh, once they made a few adjustments, uh, half of the people that was literally getting ready to go with me, like within 10 days, they were automatically eliminated because of the foolishness and things like that, because it doesn't give people enough time to make the adjustments what they need to, to make. But uh, nevertheless, we're trying to do our best. Um, I'm hearing different things of, uh, of certain things being cut back. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, unless somebody else got some do documented information, like people tell me that you don't need to have a vaccination card to get to the country. But I do organize tour business. I can't just tell my members that we have to have we have to go by everything in, in word as far as entry policy. And that's how I've been able to travel the world. If I'm going to a country, we make sure we read everything. We make sure we get all the legal paperwork and everything. That way, when we get to the country, we don't have no drama. We just enter and then proceed to what we need to do. Uh, so right now, I'm not sure where Ghana is going with that, but uh, it has affected me a lot to where I've just had to just make a bunch of adjustments. Um, I'm getting ready to go in May, and so far, we have the smallest group that I've ever had in a long time. Um, and that's really? just related to the fact that some people are not going to be able to do some of those requirements. And they have requirements to where you have to be an IT technician to follow those requirements. So we have to just try our best to go through all the process with everyone and fill out the paperwork. So um, right now, as it, as I look at, at the uh, Ghana website, it's the airport website. And the last update was like January 20 something. And it shows that you need a COVID-19 vaccination card as far as a requirement. And if you don't want to, you know, if you don't have the card, then they offer you an option of seven day quarantine. So that means if somebody okay. has to come seven days before the journey and do quarantine, which is is just crazy. But those are the things, and I'm part, just literally, honestly, just trying my best to deal with it. Um, uh, our yeah. land, our business is there, and you know, 
me and the people who have those qualifications can just go in and out and things like that. So until they reduce certain things, uh, individuals that's going to have to deal with it for now. Uh, but the good thing about it, Tanzania, Gambia, and Senegal, those countries that we have on a, other countries we have, it doesn't have that strict of uh, entry policy. And then, you know, right. Senegal got the simplest, you know, you don't even need a visa. So just repeat that, Lamani. You said uh, they are offering a seven day quarantine in Ghana if you don't have the vaccination, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. And then you said Senegal does not require a visa? Yes, Senegal does not require a visa. And uh, so, okay. so yeah, that's I didn't know that. a simple entry policy. But many of us okay. don't speak French either. Okay, very good. Now, there was a question. I believe XDMC had a question for you. Can you see the question, Bomani? Oh, yes. What I'm has been the challenging with what you're doing and what do you see that needs to change to make this process easier? Yeah, if I can be direct, um, it's uh, basically the backbiting and the backstab, and that's what makes things very hard. But I've been dealing with, with it since I was in my mid-20s, so I've kind of gotten used to it. Um, here comes this young, strong black brother that is just like, you know, I'm, I was I was recruited by the U.S. Navy and they taught you nothing but leadership in the world of aviation and tactics and strategy so they can recruit you into the, their future world. But I did get out. Um, so that leadership mindset um, I've been with from the beginning. So a lot of people I've been around has been like 20. A lot of them are usually like a lot older than me. And, you know, show my respect to my elders. Absolutely. But at the same time, too, you know, I'm a person that's, you know, you're, you're leading the operation just like young Garvey. Young Garvey was like 28 years old when he started the operation and things like that. And, you know, you tell people that, you know, you know just like respect people for their work and like not sit there and just look at my age. And I mean, it's been an issue from a long time. But uh, beyond that, you know, um, you know, beyond that, it's a lot of love, you know, a lot of love from people. And uh, as far as what needs to be changed, more of our commitment is like, if you're rolling with us and you're committed to something, stay committed. I've seen so many people who want to go to Africa and want to get land. They start the initial process. And then for whatever reason, it could be multiple reasons, they decide to change their minds and things like that. And then it's not, you know, it becomes the numbers are high as far as people just changing their minds. Like say, for example, you have 100 people that are supposed to travel with you in a calendar year. By the time you turn around, you're down to 60 or less and things like that. Uh, so... You know, and I'm all some people that the money that we get in business, we spend 100% of the money with black owned business in countries like Ghana. Um, and if we don't, we, you know, we, we, we really, you know, spend money outside of that family. Uh, countries that we're limited is kind of like Tanzania out of the three hotels, two of them are black owned and one of them is, you know, the corporate, uh, one of the corporate hotels because we, we didn't have any other access. And beyond that, um, and then, you know, may you go to one or two restaurants that's not owned by us. But beyond that, you're talking about 95% of the money you collect for business, you're investing back in the continent with your own black brothers and sisters. So that's the, uh, the thing I want to see more people get involved with. Like we have people who have groups, they they you know, they've literally, you know, they literally see what we're doing. And then they're like, okay, the, the tourism, like I'm always encouraging people, get into tourism, get into all these things in Africa. It's more, I mean, it's 50 something countries. So. More and more of us can even go research new countries and things like that. Uh, but uh, the, the issue is, once you get that set up going, please, family, think about a small, think about the hotels that we have and the business people that we have. If we don't support them, they're not going to grow. The reason why these uh, corporations are the way they are, because we religiously devote a certain percentage of our paycheck to giving the money back to the corporation. That's, what, that's why they keep them going. So I'm telling people to just focus more on that and there are black owned hotels there that's up there in a three and four star and you know and you may get limited as the further you go up but at the same time too that's the only way they're going to grow so bomani we're going to ignore xdmc because he is our jokester you see he won the coin he talking junk about the quarantine because he know karen would be on his case karen is his wife but he i think he likes to fantasize a bit so we're going to leave XDMC right there with that comment. And oh, we're going to okay. move <laughs> We're going to move on to uh, welcome everyone who may have entered. 
Um, can you do me a favor, Bomani? You shared a book in the beginning. I think it was Dr. Renoko's book. Can you uh, share that book again for our folks who didn't see it? Uh, yes, this is um, by the scholar Tony Browder. And this was now Valley Civilization. So everything that we did in Egypt, a lot of it is covered in this book. So you think okay. about reading a book and then you physically go into the location and then you see all of these things that's in a book and you physically see it in real life. And you, you, so you, you're grabbing your camera and you're like, you know, you're recording and you, you're just telling that story. Like I was studying this a few months ago and now I see it. But that was one of my most exciting journey because, you know, you're like, how was this built? Like almost 3,000 years, 3, years ago, however long it was uh, based on the different periods. And it's just incredible seeing the craftship of black people. And then you look at every statue, it looks just like you as a black person. You know, the, the, the nose of almost all of them are chipped off. That was the thing that's a trip. Because, you know, our nose is our nose. You know? We have a distinctive nose. And other, you know, you know, so when other people come there and then they don't, they see that that doesn't look like them, they're like, let me just chip nose off, ears off, and things like that. And then tell a story that their ancestors or their people did that, which is always funny. <laughs> It is. It's hysterical because think of how desperate they had to be to do something so petty, you know, and it just continues with them. So let me just say we have 17 watching. Please, family, hit the like button, share and subscribe to our channels. You're always going to get the high vibrations when you come in. And like tonight, you will never know when you get a surprise. So Bomani is my First official surprise to the family. Um, he's such a treasure. I was like, I gotta share, gotta share with y'all. And I know I just want to see more people come into the continent that are high vibration, that's all about unity and positivity. And you know, I know people say, you know, I romanticize Africa. Yes, I do. However, I accept that there are things that need to be fixed about the continent, but I don't think it should be us, right? We should be the complement, quite honestly, right? We should be coming and adding and being productive. And so having this opportunity to meet with Romani tonight, I was like, I will tackle StreamYard. I will act like I'm a techie. I almost poked out my bifocals to get serious about this. But I was making it happen. So I am proud to say I didn't have to call XDMC, Global Green Book, or Donnie and ask them how I was going to do StreamYard. The funny part was I went to log in and it said I already had an account. I was like, what do you know? See how the creative work. See, just made sure I did my thing tonight. So we are here. And um, I just want to thank everyone for coming in tonight, joining in with us. Um, if anyone has any questions related to the topics that we talked about, high vibration, please feel free. We put, um, I put the link in for the stream yard in the chat if you want to hop in before we wrap up. Otherwise, I'm going to let um, Bermani, please, any last words, you know, the podium is yours. Uh, yes, family. Uh, we have um, four wonderful journeys coming up. Um, and anyone that's interested can um, visit our website, africaforafricans.org. Now, these journeys are Ghana, May 24th to June 5th. Then we have Tanzania, November 17th to the 28th. Then the final trip for the year is Ghana, December 24th to Jan January 5th. And then we start the year off uh, in Senegal and Gambia, and that's uh, March 31st to April 10th. And so those journeys are designed to just give you full connection to roots culture and also it deals with african holocaust we usually have at least one or two sites uh, that deal with african holocaust in the case of senegal and the gambia we have you know senegal and the gambia one site each uh, which is gory island then we have jufri uh, in ghana we have cape coast holocaust dungeon and asin manso the last bath and in tanzania we have an african holocaust uh, presentation about two of them there on zanzibar island uh, so wow. those are the journeys that we have, and we have full preparation. We have consistent conference call every month and details, and just want to make sure that uh, anyone that's looking to come to the continent and want to come to these countries, this gives you a beautiful introduction. And in cases like Ghana, we have business and investment conference. We have the tour of the land where you physically come with me and you see our business office. You also see that the homes of the people 
that's living there and people building. You meet the chief, like literally, like I'm one of the people like, um, you know, like you talk about, like I was, uh, you're living that life and not so much just talking about it. Though. So you want people to see the experience. Everything will be deal with is hands on. I have people come to my office here in Jonesboro, Georgia. And, you know, if they're truck drivers or people moving or flying in, I'll either come get them or they'll come down here. And we sit down, talk, and break all the information down. And I do live presentation here. On the other side of here is a is a 65-inch screen, and things are projected on it, and you do full presentation. So, uh, nice. And if individuals can't come, then we do, you know, I can do a direct Zoom with them, Skype, and things like that. Uh, if they're in a, especially if they're in, a, they're in another country and – because sometimes not everybody is going to know you like that. And what you have to do is build the relationship and build trust. Like some people I, I spend years talking to. And then next thing you know, they call me and say, I'm finally ready to go. And so I'm always telling people, put the work in. The most important thing I can tell everyone now, do not take shortcuts. Shortcuts is the worst thing you can do. Put the work in this. And I know people see that. How People ask me, like, how do you do all this thing? And how do you get here? And I tell them one by one, little by little, like we're saying, you know, you know, we say in Ghana, kwa 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 kwa, or we say in uh, you know, Tanzania, pole pole, you know, slow, slow. And uh, it's just that simple. You know, you, 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 you create a logo, you create a banner, you create a website, you get your first name, number, and email address of someone that's interested and may want to travel to Africa in the future. And that's what I was doing. I was calling you from that list. I have one that's filled with people for tours and tours, and I got another one for investment for land. And, you know, and... Every year at the beginning of this time, I usually, you know, when I come back from Ghana, I usually just go through that list and, you know, and then do some other marketing. So just want to let people know that the information that we have is there and our whole operation is 100% dedicated to the Pan-African family. And it's all about us building what we need to build for our children and our future. And anyone that's not about that and not focused about that, we should never give any energy to them. You know, because I mean? and we're also and also pushing. I can't tell people what to do with their lives, but you know, we live a life where we have a black family, and everyone around me is you not know, a beautiful black family. Because I want our young sisters and our young brother know that that there's hope in life. That you know that you know because there's a lot of certain mix going on. But that's why we come into the African continent to strengthen our connection. That's beautiful, Vimani. I, I so appreciate that. While you were speaking, I, you brought something to mind, and I was like, I wonder, um, it was about the journey. It was about the journey here, and I was thinking, have you decided what continent you will finally retire to since you've been to so many? Oh, yes. Yeah, so we literally settled in Ghana. And that was the purpose of building the community, because what we were looking at um, after this traveling to Ghana so many years, I realized that I'm just not going to get up and move there. It just don't make no sense to me. I have an incredible business center here. So what I realized that I need to do is build one there in Ghana and then move everything over and operate in Ghana, like you know, without losing a beat or things like that. Uh, so uh, okay. that is what I'm looking to do. So that should be done within the next few years. And that's the plan I'm also offering and sharing with people uh, that some of us may have to use that situation because like I'm consistently working all of the business that I have in America. And the only way I can completely get away is if I can do the same setup somewhere else. So instead of trying to get a, a location where, you know, the lights are going to go off, the water is going to go out um, and, you know, you may not have the comfort and the, the setup that you need. Why not just build it? So that's what we also about, you know, like my brother Kyle was talking about, we have to build fresh African infrastructure. That way we can operate the way we need to operate and don't put pressure on the local infrastructure. So in the, even in the community we have is just fully off the grid and I'm telling people that is the way we have to use because the technology is out there now to where you can be completely sustainable. You know, I'm sure you can almost go out and live go out in, in the desert and create civilization like, you know, you, like, like we've seen uh, in Dubai and, and places like that or in Vegas. So the possibilities is there and I want to go back to what Garvey say in the, when he talks about opportunities, Gavi always tell us to take advantage of every opportunity. And he also talk about where there's no opportunities, we create it. And that's what I felt like when I was there in Ghana over the years. I didn't, I, I didn't see these diaspora communities being, you know, being organized properly. So we got into the game and we laid an example. So now people have something to kind of work with. You know, and that's why we have to always make examples. And then you're looking for your own brothers and sisters to take whatever is laid out at the foundation to take it to another level. 
And I'm, and I'm always telling my son and telling the younger brothers and sisters that the foundation that we built, we want you guys to do better than us. And we want you guys to take it to another level, you know, and we want to give you our full support. And, you know, when you get up that age, we want to step out the way and then let you take on leadership. And some of, and those are some of the things that I learned in the military and I learned why they're so effective and organized uh, because they have a level of structure and they focus on grooming young leadership. Like I couldn't believe when they accepted me in the Navy at 18 years old, I was like, you know, and, and you got this position as an aircraft technician, but it's based on test scores. So I studied very hard and had a technical background. So I scored very high in the technical part of it. So you got that position, but you don't get these opportunities like that as a young man. So especially, you know, a black young man. So take advantage of whatever opportunity you can get. And I'm, telling, not, I'm not here to promote people joining the military or promote people to do anything. I'm just into people. You have to take advantage of what you have available. At that point, I didn't see any other option that I had. And all the options that I had, I didn't want it. I didn't want to work for $5.50 anymore, which I was working at JFK Airport, being a, you know one of those low budget, or a, a security guard and things like that. Yeah. Uh, or in, and I wanted the, you know, my family had brought me from Jamaica at 11. So I wanted to make my family proud. So I wanted to build a career, you know. And you know, you know like my father said, that it, it really, I didn't bring you to this company to work for minimum wage. That's what he told me directly. And I told him it was just a, it was a side job, you know. After you know, after high school, to, to make you know, to make a little money. But I was, I'm still practicing my craft to build my career in the military because I don't feel like university is for me right now. <laughs> but I'm, nice. I'm, I'm, I'm I came on this path, and ancestors have guided me, and I feel good just being leader in an organization for our people and I'm here to get the work done so anybody that's really serious about any of these things they can reach out to me and we can get this done and we can connect and work together and one I also let people know I have 50 people in our community it's hard to get one or two people to join you in anything so if you have 50 people in the community and we have lost people so we have had way more than that um, you know so just think about that when I'm talking to people how can you pull these things off without being serious about your business. So if you need help and you need support and you need to have a conversation of somebody who can guide you in the right way, just reach out to me because I have 18 years experience on traveling on the African continent, on 10 countries. And I went from knowing nobody to a whole lot of people in many different countries. Very nice. Thank you, Mamani. Thank you so much. I yes, so sir. appreciate you coming on this evening. Please always stay with the high vibrations, brother. Those people who really see you, they see how you move. They know what you're about. That's all that matters. Right? Thank you, family. Thank you so much for coming at the last minute. I'll be scheduling a live soon to talk about cost of living in the Gambia. And please follow Bomani's channel. The information is in the chat. If you all haven't seen it, Global Green Book is kind enough to put that in there for us and all of his social media outlets are there. Like, share, and subscribe to the video. And let's encourage our family to travel to Africa. Everybody needs to do it at least once. We're going to wrap up. Say good night. Bomani, I will be in touch. Blessings, everyone. Talk soon. Have a good night. Stay safe. All right. Take care, family. Bye-bye.